We uh, actually have a pretty short agenda today for our City of Bloomington Plan Commission for February 10th, uh, 2020. So I'll call the meeting to order and we'll start by calling roll. St. John? Here. Sandberg? Here. Schonkweiler? Here. Kinsey? Here. Kate? Here. Burrell? Here. Okay. Well, it looks like we have quorum. And um, I wonder if we have any reports, resolutions, or communications, staff or commissioners? Anything? Uh, nothing from staff. Okay. Nothing from us? Okay. All right. Well, we have some minutes to approve from December and January. Anybody want to make a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Second. I wonder if we, we probably need to do them separately. Do we need to do December, January separately? Desiree, would you prefer? Yeah, maybe we should. Okay, let's be, let's be incredibly formal about this. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, Commissioner Kate's. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of uh, the December, approving the December minutes, say aye. 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 Any op opposition? Move approval of the January 2020. Minutes. Thank you. Second. Great. Okay. We have a first and a second for January minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Minutes for December and January are approved. So we can move on to um, reports, or I'm sorry, move, let's move on to petitions now. So we can, um, looks like we only have one petition, PUD 0120 CDG Acquisitions LLC at 1800 North Walnut Street, a request for a PUD final plat approval for a 242 unit mixed use development. All right, Eric, are you ready? here today requesting final plan approval um, for this property as some of you may recall this received a rezoning approval last year to rezone the property from commercial arterial to a planned unit development in order to facilitate the redevelopment of this property um, the property is on the north side of town just across from miller showers park at 1800 north walnut street uh, it's currently been developed with a motel six um, development with several outbuildings and parking lot the petitioners received approval to rezone the property in order to allow for it to be redeveloped with a 242-unit uh, mixed-use development. Um, so this would involve removing all of the buildings from the property um, in order to construct uh, two new buildings on the site. Um, overall, the petition was approved to allow for a building that would be between five and six stories in height. Um, it would have two separate buildings, um, one main large building on the west side of the site um, that would have a parking garage incorporated into it, and then another building on the east side of the site um, that would be kind of a, a smaller building that would also be for residential uses. Um, <clears throat> so when this went to the Planning Commission, um, it then went on to the City Council. Um, there were several changes uh, that were made during the course of the City Council review process. Um, I'll just kind of briefly kind of summarize some of those changes in case you were um, confused about the site plan in front of you and how that was different from the previous one that you had seen. Um, the petition that came to the Planning Commission did have an access drive along the front of the property um, to provide access to some of the commercial spaces. That was removed. Uh, subsequently, the building was then moved forward as a result, um, which brought it closer to the street. Um, so there's a large outdoor plaza and seating area uh, that is shown along the front of the building, uh, both along the commercial space and along the amenity space. Um, the building also has some additional modulation that was provided around some of those areas. Um, the setback was increased along some of the areas along the perimeter. Uh, an entire floor of the building was removed uh, from the eastern building. Um, that's building 2000 on the right side of the screen here. Um, a green roof was also added along a portion of the building, and I'll show that in just a second when we get to the floor plan, um, as well as some solar panels were added. Um, so there were kind of some uh, substantial uh, changes that were made during the course of the city council process, um, and so that has brought forward the site plan that you see before you today. Um, so there would be two access cuts on Walnut Street. 
Um, the property currently has two access drives. Um, the, the existing access drive that is on the south side of the site would be, would be relocated to the north to align with the cut through that occurs just north of Miller Showers Park. Um, this would provide access to the parking garage, which is located on the south side of Building 1000. Um, there's also an access drive that circles around the main building as well as uh, extends back to the second or the eastern building. Um, most of those drive connections are all to provide fire department access to those buildings. Um, so they will be shown with a paver block system. Um, they will be certainly uh, able to be used by vehicles, um, but for the most part, they're, they're just there for emergency access. Um, so the petitioner has also provided a landscape plan. Um, this is in your packet. Um, staff is still reviewing some of the details with the landscape plan, so this would be finalized um, prior to the issuance of a grading permit. Uh, the petitioner previously committed to using native species throughout the property, um, and so they've incorporated native species in all of their plantings, um, but we're still reviewing this with the um, uh, grading permit, so that'll, that'll meet all of the uh, requirements that they outlined in their district ordinance. Um, as I mentioned, there was a green roof that was shown um, that is on the left side of the building, and I'll see if I can kind of highlight that. There we go. Um, so there's a green roof component that was added on the west side of the building, uh, as well as solar panels. You can see those along the south side of that building. Um, so those were added at the, during the city council process. Um, so this is the floor plan for the building, just showing the rough layout of the building um, with the green roof and the solar panels. Um, you can see the, the separate building along the east. As I mentioned, the setbacks were increased around some of those buildings um, to help facilitate some of the concerns from adjacent property owners. Um, another area uh, that was discussed with the previous petition um, was sidewalk connectivity, um, both immediately adjacent to this property as well as um, to Dunn Street and the IU parking lot that is to the east of this. Um, so the petitioners had previously committed to providing off-site sidewalk connections along Walnut Street and 19th Street. Um, that's the area that's kind of shown in the black box here. Um, during conversations with the city council, um, they also agreed to extend that sidewalk system along the entire 19th Street corridor. Um, so the petitioners have worked to come up with a... Uh, uh, kind of a conceptual site plan and, and we're still working through some of the details of the specifics of this plan, um, but this would involve the construction of a sidewalk and tree plot along the north side of 19th Street um, all the way from Walnut Street to Dunn Street to the east. Um, so we are continuing to work with the utilities department uh, as well as the petitioner um, to balance all of the, the, mon the funds that are available um, to get a sidewalk and tree plot and stormwater um, along that entire corridor. Um, fortunately, there is right of way along this area that helps facilitate some of that, um, but we're still working out some of those details and we'll have that hopefully ironed out um, during the grading permit stage. So that'll be a substantial improvement along 19th Street to get the students that will be utilizing this building um, over to the IU parking area. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to kind of step through um, some of the renderings um, that have been submitted and the architectural elevations. Um, these are predominantly very, very similar in essence to what was seen at the initial Planning Commission meeting. Um, not much has really changed along these. There was some additional brick and some modulation that was added um, during the course of the council review. Um, those have all been shown here in these renderings. Um, as I mentioned, the building is predominantly five to six stories. Um, there is areas of the parking garage uh, that are a little bit taller. Uh, those reach a height of about 85 feet for the parking garage. Um, so this elevation is the side facing Walnut Street. Um, the commercial space is along the left side of the building, um, and then amenity center is along the right side of the building or the south side of the building. Um, so you can see the substantial amount of glass, uh, brick column along the front, uh, as well as brick along some of the sides and the corners. Um, those are all things that were agreed to during the uh, city council meeting. Um, so this is kind of the, the previous rendering, um, but it's still very similar um, to what is being shown here today. Um, so I just wanted to kind of step through that. Um, some of these are just uh, the previous renderings just to kind of get a feel for um, the surrounding areas. 
Um, so this is the overall massing model um, that was submitted with the initial hearing. Um, as I mentioned, the parking garage will have a height of approximately 85, 86 feet. That is along the center of the building. Um, the building in the back will have a height of about 70 feet or 60 feet. Um, this masking model does not reflect um, the floor that was removed from that building, um, so that has been reduced in height a little bit. Um, one of the other components to this project um, that was heavily discussed was uh, Bloomington Transit and a shuttle service that will be contracted with Bloomington Transit. Um, so the petitioners have uh, arranged for a contract with Bloomington Transit to provide an exclusive shuttle service. Um, it would serve this development as well as other folks along the, the Bloomington Transit route. Um, so that route is shown in red here on this map. Um, that is a three-year agreement that will be renegotiated, reanalyzed every three years. Um, but the petitioners are not allowed to operate a shuttle. Um, to serve the campus and will contract with Bloomington Transit. Um, so with that, um, as we found with the initial rezoning, um, this petition furthers many of the goals of the comprehensive plan. Um, it provides a, a substantial improvement over the existing use on the property, um, redevelopment of student housing that is outside of the downtown. Um, there was a, a substantial uh, housing contribution that was made for this project. Uh, I included that initial commitment um, that was agreed to with the uh, initial rezoning petition. Um, so the high architectural design also is, will substantially improve uh, the looks and the view along this major corridor into the city. Um, so we are recommending approval of the petition um, with the four conditions that are listed in staff's report. Um, and we've added a, a fifth condition um, that says that the petitioner will work, will work with staff um, to add some windows along some of the blank wall areas along the parking area. Um, so on the south side of the building, um, and it's mostly facing internally, but some of it will, will be visible from the street. Um, there's some large areas of blank wall that are adjacent to the parking garage entrance. Um, we just like to continue to work with the petitioner to um, either get some art or some windows in there to help kind of break up that, that blank wall. Um, so as I mentioned, we are recommending approval um, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, petitioner comments? Um, I don't have a whole lot to add. Eric did a, a great job kind of summarizing what, what we've put forth. We feel like we've met all the requests um, of Planning Commission through the original process as well as the City Council process. Um, we think we've, you know, put forth a, a great looking building as well as incorporated green and uh, sustainable aspects uh, to, you know, at, at the request of Council and as well as to just um, further improve the environment so um, available for any questions but other otherwise I, I feel we feel great that we've put forth a, a design or we've evolved the design and it still meets all the requirements that were set forth throughout Planning Commission and Council process great thank you very much all right well we can go to commissioners questions to staff and to the petitioner do we have any on my left Craig? Yes. I don't remember what the contribution amount was. Eric, you said you mentioned it. I didn't see it in here. I'm, I'm sorry, could to you the say fund, that? The contribution amount to the fund, did you say that's been finalized? Yeah, so, uh, so the petitioner is contributing a, a certain dollar value, uh, $20,000 for 15% of the units. Um, so uh, it roughly, I think, works out to uh, something like $2.4 million, something like that. Do you know how much it is? No, okay. Uh, it's yeah, fifteen percent of seven fifty times twenty thousand. All right, someone's got a calculator yeah. here. All right, let's figure out what that is. It's a different weight. Six point two four two seven. Okay. And how is that paid? Is it? paid as a lump sum or over some um, number of so, years? So that's broken down in their, their commitment, but basically they will be giving us a, a certain percentage of that um, with the uh, building permit application, mm -hmm. um, and then the remainder of that will be given once the occupancy permits are issued. Okay, so fairly upfront. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks. I just had a quick question on the um, electric vehicle charging stations. Where where did you all end up on that? I know staff has sort of encouraged petitioner to include those. What what's your thinking currently on those? We plan to have a few electrical vehicle charging stations within the garage itself. Mm -hmm. I think you know originally before when we had parking in the front of the building, we were possibly going to put some out there, but since that changed at the request of council, they'll all be internal to the garage. Mm -hmm. Do you have any feel for how many you're talking about? No, I would say, you know, we have, I think, 415 spaces um, total, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've done similar size projects, and we've included three to four, um, which seems to be a, a pretty decent amount. They get a decent amount of usage, not, you mm -hmm. know, it's kind of a transition, you know, in across the country right now to, yeah. to that point, and I'm slowly getting there, but Mm -hmm. I would say three to four would be a, a good number. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions to my left? When you say three to four, you mean three to four per floor or just three to four total? Three to four total. So about, you know, somewhere around 10% of the parking spaces for electrical vehicles. Uh -huh. yeah, 1%. Or, yeah, 1%. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, questions to my right? Sure. Off-site improvement on 19th Street. It looks like it extends all the way down to Dunn Street. And what were you saying was the issues you were trying to sort out um, for them to be allowed to do these improvements? Is there a right-of-way issue? Uh, Basically, are they going to be able to do these improvements, or is this just kind of us looking at something that shiny and bright? Uh, no, they were they were required to commit uh, three hundred thousand um, dollars toward improvements along Nineteenth Street. Um, so there is fifty feet of right of way within Nineteenth Street to work within, um, which is is great because we don't have to worry about acquiring right of way. Um, so at the very least, we will be able to get a sidewalk and tree plot along there. Um, there are stormwater improvements that are proposed in there as well that the City of Bloomington Utilities Department uh, will be able to contrib contribute money toward. Um, so at the very least, we'll be getting a sidewalk and a street a tree plot and stormwater improvements along 19th Street. Depending on the cost of those, um, you know, then we might be able to work in um, some more street trees or something of like that, um, but they are required to spend money toward improving that uh, corridor. Okay, great. I, I had one other question, and this is um, kind of a carryover um, of the first time we saw this, um, and this is to staff. Are they, so I, I see that they're not planning on dedicating the roads to the city, and that's not something that the planning staff is encouraging them to do, and I'm curious why not. Yep, so the, the internal drives will be private. Um, so the, the zoning code only requires public streets for single family housing. Right. Um, you know, it's very common in multifamily situations and in commercial subdivisions um, where you just have a lot of driveways um, right. that they are designed to meet public streets if they're being used that way. Sometimes streets are just simply access to a building and parking spaces. So there's not really a benefit um, to them being public dedicated right away. Um, so the internal roads for this would all be private. Okay, well, I just want to unpack that a little bit. I mean, they're asking to approve this, which means then we could in return ask for them to dedicate the road. I understand that that's typically done with single residents uh, or single family dwellings. Um, so you, I just foresee a huge potential connection there and if we don't have it dedicated, we lose that possibility. Um, like I said, this was a concern I had when I saw this previously, so I just want to echo it again. Um, if they did dedicate that to the city, we would be basically having to maintain that, right? Um, plow it and things of that nature. So outside of that, where else would be a downside fall? Um, and 
the perspective of planning, I guess. So, you know, the downside is, is certainly one of the things that you just mentioned there is the, the maintenance of those roads. Um, so, you know, public roads, you know, they, they serve a benefit for providing services to adjacent residents. Um, you know, certainly the more roads that the city has, the more money we have to spend to maintain those. And so it's, it's kind of a advantage, disadvantage. You know, it, these will be used as roads. They'll be have, um, you know, we can require an access easement through there, but there's not a road stub to the adjacent property to connect to. Um, so although our, our transportation plan does have, uh, I believe it's uh, 20th Street kind of extending or, or some kind of a road connection that was going through here, um, you know, the petition was filed before that was put in place. Um, so there's a utility line that runs along the north side of the building um, that actually the, the utility line runs through the center of the property, I think, right now. So they're moving it to the north side of the site just so they don't have a building over it. So the location of that public line that runs through the site really kind of provided a, a big problem for them in terms of where they could move it and not have a building placed over it. Um, so yes, ideally, um, if, there, if this was a somewhat larger property and there wasn't a public line moving through here and there was the ability to have a public road moving all the way through here and a stub to connect to, um, you know, that'd be advantageous. Um, however, a lot of those factors aren't here. Um, so when we kind of reviewed the site plan or initially, you know, the decision was kind of already made that we're not going to require a public road to go through here. Um, so this is just kind of following up on the site plan that we already kind of looked at, the district ordinance, the preliminary plan that we approved. Um, so this is following, you know, basically 100% the preliminary plan that we already approved. Okay, but I appreciate that, uh, especially the practical difficulties you outlined with the utility. Um, that's nice to know. Just in that area, you can see how there's been a lot of development with these larger complexes that just basically bottleneck um, everyone within that apartment complex. Um, that's one reason I was really focused on the 19th Street. I feel like that's a great alternative, um, and I think that could help a lot with some issues with um, congestion, not just traffic, but I'm talking about um, pedestrians too and people just kind of making their own paths back there to get around so I'm very <coughs> happy to see that off-site improvement on 19th Street I think that will help out tremendously so thank you okay. I have a process question for staff I don't know if Ms. Ganlin or Ms. Porter can field this it has to do with the um, status of the UDO um, when does the new UDO actually go into effect? Is it, is it still waiting on the, the mapping to be complete or this project is since it be yep, so began the, in 19? Yep, is, so the, the new UDO will come into effect once the conversion map is approved. Um, we're hoping that will be April 1st, uh, could be May 1st at the latest. So this PUD that we're looking at is still kind of operating under the Correct. It's under operating under the, I don't want to say old UDO, but the current UDO that is in effect. Which is why the contribution to the Housing Development Fund is allowed to fly with this one, right? Yes, the petitioner is already previously voluntarily committed to that. Okay. Thank you. All right. I have a couple questions uh, related first to the green roof. Do you have a better image where that is going? Can you show me again? Um, I don't know yep, if there's so a good the, one. The, the floor plan that I've got here is kind of the, the best image that shows that. And so that is on this corner of the building. I don't know if you can see where the red mm -hmm. guys circling around there. Um, so that's the, that's the portion of the building that will be the green roof. Um, uh, and the floor plan here is really the, kind of the, the best thing that I've got that shows that area. Will that be seen at all by anyone or anything visible? Um, from no, that might be better answered by the petitioner, the, I can't say. An airplane, yeah. Yeah, no, that, so that is one of the taller, well, I mean, as the site, that's the lower portion of the site, but the tallest part of the building on that side of the site. Um, there, you know, I don't know that there would be anywhere throughout the buildings that we would locate it that our residents could, you know, have a visual um, sight line to it. Um, now, could you see it from other properties? Potentially, but um, 
Yeah, we were we were doing it strictly from a, a environmental sustainability standpoint, not necessarily for a beautification. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Okay. And then another question is a little bit more about the sidewalk. Um, Eric used the word air, uh, sidewalk system, and I wonder if that means something more than than what I would typically see on a sidewalk. Are there, is it wider? Are there bike lanes or is there? Um, no, so it would be a, a five foot plot. wide concrete sidewalk mm -hmm. um, within a, at least a minimum five foot wide tree plot separating that between the street. Okay, and what's, what's on 19th now? I'm sorry I didn't look at my Google Maps before. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a hodgepodge. Um, there are some properties that have sidewalks. There are a lot of them that don't. Um, but as part of this, we would be basically removing any kind of uh, existing sidewalks to install one continuous uniform system all the way across that corridor. Okay, so that's a, that would be a significant improvement to uh, what exists very significant there currently. Yes. Okay, great. And then one more, um, I, I must be on a green theme here, um, the conflict with the native landscape versus the sh evergreens. I wonder if, is that clear to everyone what it is that we'll be able to get in this? Is the focus, will the focus be on native landscape because we can't really do the 50% evergreens because that there's no biodiversity in that? Where are we on that? Is, um, you know? No, you, you stated it pretty succinctly there. Um, so the evergreen native shrubs are pretty much limited, I think, to one thing. <laughs> Um, so that is, that's something that we've kind of highlighted with the new code. Um, the petitioners are just working with our environmental planner to see what would be the best solution to that. Um, so while they, they are bound to use native species, um, you know, if, if staff makes a determination that something else might be more appropriate to increase the biodiversity, um, then we'll, we'll look into that. Okay. Is that clear to petitioner what we're, clear as mud? Yeah. Our not to continue well, I, that. I understand that the concern is y you want native species, but there's only one type of evergreen. And the other thing you guys would like to see is biodiversity. And so we may need to work with staff to identify non-native species to get more evergreen, but still biodiverse. Um, but yeah, there's a balancing act of what, what you guys want to see versus what we can provide per the code. Great. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'd up on that so this is because the old code requires 50 percent evergreen is that right yes the, the current sorry yes. the current ordinance it and that has that been fixed for the new one i can't remember to be honest with you. uh i think the the proposed new udo still has that 50 percent, but i think we've introduced one or two other species that might help increase the biodiversity okay i'm not a hundred percent on that but i can give you a better answer tomorrow if you're at the work launch session okay yeah, that would be good okay. to fix for next round. And then one last, um, or two last questions. One is about, it's it could probably continuing some of the things that um, Trent um, brought up about the cut through or possible walk through. And at the last time we saw this, we asked about some possible, um, you know, I don't know if it would be a, I'll call it what we used to call it in my neighborhood, a friendship gate between the two properties, the neighboring properties for people to cross through. And my presumption is that that's not, there's no further developments in the um, existing property owners kind of allowing for some walkthrough or anything. That's, that's correct. There was okay. not interest on the other part, party's part to. So, so they provided a, a sidewalk stub yeah. Um, you know, in a connection to the property line so that at some point in the future, if, when uh, the adjacent property redevelops, we can extend that. Okay. That's the best we can hope for right now, I'm guessing. Yep. All right. And then the last thing was um, I'm pleased to see the BT route that was on there. Do you know if that's the farthest north the Bloomington Transit Goes. I mean, I think this might extend Bloomington Transit farther north than. No, Bloomington Transit goes uh, north of the bypass now. Um, yeah. It serves the Fritz Terrace neighborhood as well as the Kroger. Oh yeah, that's that's um, correct. Yep. So yeah, it does extend a little bit further north from this. Okay, but maybe it's north and. Yeah. East. 
that it? I, I can't tell what's, is that the, by, it's on the bypass. Is that traveling on the bypass? Well, okay. so, the, so the route that you see now, the red line uh, goes along the bypass. Um, so for this specific route, this would be the northernmost yeah. terminus. Okay, yep, okay, great. All right, good. Okay, any other questions? I have one just follow up. Sorry, I meant to ask this uh, when I asked before about the electric vehicle charging station. So if it turns out that uh, there's an increased desire for more of those charging stations in future, is that something that's easily retrofitable? Um, I'm not technically savvy enough to answer that. Honestly, I would have mm -hmm. to check with our electrical engineer to know what kind of capacity those things draw and how much mm -hmm. Ex <clears throat> excess capacity we may have on our house services, mm -hmm. um, but we can we can look into that and okay. see if there's a, you know if if we need to increase service size to gain four more in the future, uh, what mm -hmm. that would take. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Do, uh, this is focused sort of student housing, right? So, mm -hmm. um, do do we have any data on? How many students are driving electric vehicles? Is that something you guys study? Is that do we have any information on that? We Just don't. I don't. I don't know if Eric does, but we we don't. Mm -hmm. All we know is from historical use on other properties, and yeah. we have these in you know Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Knoxville, Tennessee, and mm -hmm. you know it, we've had a couple charging stations per location mm -hmm. um, with similar number of parking spaces, and they they do get used, but they aren't you know there's not a lot of clamoring for them or for request for more. Okay. As far, you know, that, that's the only data I have. Okay, thank you. All right, are we good to move on to public comment? All right, if we have people from the public, please approach the podium and state your name and make your comment and you have up to five minutes. Thanks. My name is Tom Beavis. I am with the uh, Hamptons Townhomes, 1739 North Washington Street. I'm here on behalf of us as well as the uh, Wingate Motel that adjoins our property. Both of our properties are on the south side of the CDG project. And we currently have an egress and uh, uh, in, in egress egress at, for Walnut on uh, that's an easement at the southwest corner of the CDG project. That easement is uh, being requested to be moved to the north. We were opposed to that uh, movement in previous hearings, and we continue to oppose that. Uh, my attorney sent a letter today uh, to those people involved, and there is a Indiana State uh, Supreme Court ruling as, as early as uh, latest 198 or 2018 in uh, Ellisville and um, we're requesting that this be resolved before approval is given to this project. Mm -hmm. It's rather critical to the entrance of their property and it's critical to us as well. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Greg Alexander. Um, my awareness this project started, I was walking at 17th and, and um, done, uh, walking to the football stadium with my young children. And I noticed that the sidewalk was in poor repair, didn't have ramps, didn't have crosswalks, didn't have, had gaps, um, that there wasn't sidewalk on like the east side of Dunn Street, north of 17th Street, that there wasn't sidewalk on either side of Dunn Street, south of 17th Street, um, even though this is, if you go and see, there's plenty of people walking there constantly. Um, there's no sidewalks on either side of Indiana Avenue. There's, um, there's sidewalk gaps still on North Walnut. And I was navigating this kind of extremely poor pedestrian environment, and I thought to myself, gee, why did they just build, what do they call it, Evolve, used to be Dunhill Apartments right there. Uh, they just added hundreds of bedrooms, and they didn't do a thing for, for these sidewalks on this side of the street, and they didn't do a thing for the intersection either. Um, and I was astounded, so I figured they just didn't ask the question. That was how it was done 10 years ago. You just didn't ask the question, didn't, is there a sidewalk facility? And so I looked it up and I was just shocked to find out the staff had come here and said specifically, you should build this project because the sidewalks here are so good. And I was flabbergasted. That was the first 
pay to play project and I, I didn't know what to make of that, but I kept watching and I found out about this project, the second big pay to play project, and staff had made the exact same claims and there wasn't even, this one was a quarter mile further away from campus, but there weren't sidewalks in between. I walk on 19th Street also with my kids, also because they love the, the, we call it the duck pond, the Miller showers park thing. Um, and there's no sidewalks there, and the crosswalks on Walnut are a joke. They're misengineered every way you possibly could imagine. They don't line up with the sidewalks that do exist. Um, and then, again, no sidewalk on 19th Street and so on. So I came here to, to, to say, you know, staff has made a mistake. You should look at this. And I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that the petitioner has agreed to build the missing sidewalk on 19th Street. But the students who live here will travel 19th Street. They'll use that um, to get to the campus bus when the campus bus is running, if that fits their schedule but sometimes they're gonna to need to walk all the way to campus. And there still aren't sidewalks uh, on Dunn or on Indiana. And that's such an obvious place that people really do walk a good deal and there just simply aren't sidewalks. People walk in the street, they walk in the mud, they walk in the gravel. And there's not sidewalks on the east side of Dunn, north of 17th Street. And that's a huge ditch and it separates the street from the bus stop, the IU bus stop. And it will be challenging, it will be a challenging project to build sidewalks there. It will cost more than your typical sidewalk project. But that's essential because there are so many, now there's two crosswalks right there, um, and those crosswalks don't lead anywhere. They don't, there's no sidewalk on the other side of the street. And so if you're going anywhere other than the bus, you're, you're kind of forced to cross in a stupid place. And um, one of the stupid places you can cross is 17th and Dunn, which still hasn't been improved. Um, there's no crosswalks, there's no, there's, you, you literally can't get to one corner of the street there because there's a big ditch on that corner of the street also. And um, so on the one hand, it's good that, that one gap is being filled in, but we have much larger gaps closer to campus that remain before this project is viable as a pedestrian experience to get to campus. And I bring this to your attention, not because I think Petitioner has a responsibility to fix every sidewalk in town, um, but because this commission and the bodies that served as function before is responsible largely for a tremendous amount of leapfrog development where there's no sidewalks. Um, it defines the city. About half of the city was built without sidewalks, systematically lacking sidewalks, and this is an example of that. And now, you know, you know better, but now we're doing infill development in places where there's no sidewalks. We need to address the sidewalk issue. We need to bring it to the council. Some of you guys sit on council. Some of you guys are, are in staff you need to actually do something about the sidewalk situation here. Um, and I think I really, it's gonna be a political thing, perhaps lawyers need to get involved, but we should get, into the, we should get to the bottom of the question of how it was that staff erroneously determined that there were so many sidewalks here when there were not. Thank you. Thank you. Any other for public comment? Okay, seeing none. Eric, can we get a staff input on the legal matter that Mr. Evis raised? Is that? Uh, so that is a, a matter between two adjacent property owners regarding a private easement. Um, so it's not a, something that we regulate or enforce. Um, that is for them to work out amongst themselves. Okay. So as far as we can determine, there's no effect that the council can do make or nothing that we can do to resolve this? Yeah, we, we do not get involved with private easements. Um, absolutely, they have to figure it out before they start construction and uh, do anything. Um, so hopefully between now and grading permit stage, they'll be able to work out that between themselves. Has there been discussion about um, the, the location of this and of the, the South, or is it the North easement? I don't know which one it was. Uh, so the, the petitioner would have to answer that. Yeah. Yes, there, there's been a little discussion uh, back when we came to Planning Commission and Council uh, previously. Um, and, you know, I think, and there may just be some miscommunication or misunderstanding as to why the drive was set up the way it was because it lines up with the crossover across from Walnut or the crossover of Walnut. Um, and so we would just need to hear uh, Tom's concerns about 
what that is. I, you know, I think he just engaged us again as late as last week. So we just we need time to have that discussion, um, read the legal documents because it's our understanding that we, the legal documents allow us to to adjust the easement area. And I think he has a different understanding. So it's just something that we need to okay. to continue to work through. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's about the easements. You, you don't intervene with easements on property. Then what do you do in the plat committee? I mean, I, I don't, so some of I those don't see are that public. being a legit answer. And the reason why is because they are submitting a plat that shows ingress and egress. And if it is a shared easement, then planning should sort those matters out before this commission deliberates. That, that is... Now I understand you're not going to go to court over that. They need to sort it out and resolve it. But for us to be making a decision which could impact an easement, I think is completely planning's responsibility. And I just don't think that was a fair answer there. So I spoke to our legal department this afternoon, and they affirmed uh, that this is not our place to get involved. This is not a public easement, so then therefore it's not Then should they not, not be submitting this petition until it's resolved, is my question. So that is a matter for them to work out. It is not a zoning issue. So but it it's, a share, it's a shared easement, so it's kind of like someone submitting a petition but not owning the entire mm -hmm. meets and bounds of that property. No, that's, that's different. Um, that's doing work on somebody else's land. Um, so this is them working within easement uh, that is between them only. So we, we do not enforce those. We do not get involved with that. But how does it get here prior to them resolving that issue? That, that's my question. I, I, I would be really curious if we should be weighing in on this as there's still an issue with the easement. Sure, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, our legal department had a different opinion. Can I ask a uh, Sort of follow up to that. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We had a question about two. We discussed it with legal. They said we could go forward. If you want to add a condition of approval to this that says this cannot be built until the easement situation is resolved, you can you can do that. That's fine. Um, that's basically all we could do at this point, based on the guidance that we got. Can I just uh, ask? I'm trying to figure out what are the options here. This is talking about ingress to the property, right? So from our standpoint, we're just understanding how this is going to operate. It bears on our understanding of how people are getting in and out of this area. So what, what are, the, are the options? If we're being asked to approve the site plan, can we do that assured that however these two parties resolve their concerns about the easement, that it's not going to impact our understanding of how this project's going to work. Does that yep. make sense? So, so our, our purview and, and the Planning Commission's purview as well uh, is does this site plan meet the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance and the District Ordinance that has been approved and governs this property? So the answer to those questions is yes. So the site plan, the parking spaces, the setbacks, the height, all of those things that are regulated by the Unified Development Ordinance and the District Ordinance have been met. Um, so this is, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to keep saying this, this is a, a private easement. They can change the terms of those easements at any time. We don't have to sign off on them. We don't regulate them. We do not hold records of them. Those are, those are private easements. So if one party thinks that they're meeting an easement and the other party thinks that it doesn't, then that's for their lawyers to work out. That's not a zoning issue. Okay. No, thanks, Eric. I mean, I, I think... I'm following that, but I guess it goes back to what you said before about it would be different if they were building on someone else's property, but, and maybe I just don't know enough about the easement situation here, but I guess my limited understanding of an easement would be, what is this, who owns the land and who's granting the easement to whom? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because, so. because if there's not, um, because if there's not either ownership by the petitioner or a easement that allows you to use the property that's being reflected in that photo, then we are in that situation, aren't we? Of someone building on it. Am I missing something? Yeah. Which I could easily be. The, so. the, the plan that you see in front of you 
is entirely on our property. The, 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 the easement in question is an easement that the property, our property, granted to adjoining property owners. Um, and it's, I believe, where the disconnect is is the interpretation of the easement itself is whether it, the grantor has the right to adjust location of the easement or not. We're not, we're not trying to take access away. We're just adjusting the location. Um, and so I think, and maybe if I can simplify the, the, the ask is that I think we're requesting you approve the plan put in front of you, um, that it meets all the, the codes and ordinances that we're, we're governed under. Um, and if, that, if this plan were, ha were to have to change in the future because of a legal document that you know, we go down the path and figure out what needs to happen, then we would need to come back to staff or, or planning commission to ask to move the entrance if that's something that's required. But at this point, I think we, all the information we have is that this plan put forth can be constructed um, and we're asking for approval on this plan. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks, that's very helpful. I guess the one, there was a, a qualifier in the last thing you said about if, basically if you need to come back, would that be the case? If this moves, would we be seeing this again? Um, it, it's possible. We'd have to see what the change would be. Um, you know, if it's just a simple matter of uh, the driveway entrance, as long as it meets the separation requirements from the adjacent drives on the same street, um, you know, it'd be our interpretation if we feel like that's a substantial enough change, they would have to come back. Mm -hmm. And is that the case without our putting a, con a separate condition to that effect on that's simply through the operation of the uh, UDO? Right. So as, it, as it, everything is shown right now, it meets all the separation requirements. Um, you know, if it needs to adjust a foot or two or three feet, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can be fine as long as it still meets the separation requirements right. from the adjacent drives. That's really the only place that the UDO governs where this could, where this drive can be located. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our main concern was making sure that it, uh, that it aligned um, with the cut through from Miller showers across the street. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that, that's the main concern. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as it's, you know, our traffic and transportation folks still say that it's safe, um, then, yeah. you know, it, it could be possible to move it and wouldn't have to come back to the Planning Commission. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. All right. So are we ready for anyone to make a motion on this PUD? The staff I recommendation is approval with the five conditions noted. Do we want to make a motion in that regard? I move that we approve uh, case number PUD 0120 with the conditions uh, recommended by staff. Second. All right. Do we want to have any discussion about this? <laughs> um, are you guys going to propose something else? I find it pretty important to really sort that issue out with the connectivity there. I mean, not just the sole fact that I use that all the time to kind of neander over. Um, if that's a legit easement and then they move it to the south, that could impact setbacks, other types of minutia in this petition that are yet to be seen since it's not really sorted out. I, I, I guess I'd have a general question. If we conditioned um, it to be sorted out, how long do you think that process may take, if anyone's equipped to answering that? Uh, that's for the petitioners to answer. I, I can't answer what the timeline may look like. Um, because again, I think it's going to be a legal question, right, as to whether or not the, the easement allows for it to be shifted, or if it doesn't allow it to be shifted, then what's the next step in working out what, what is agreeable to both parties? So um, I guess, yeah, to put a condition on the approval would, I think, it makes it a little bit difficult to understand what that condition would be. because. We, 
and I'm not trying to foreshadow the future either, like if we don't necessarily agree on the language of the easement document and we have a disagreement, then that's something that we're gonna have to work out in the legal realm. Um, so it may never be necessarily worked out. Um, and, I, and I don't know because I, I, this is, you know, kind of new information here. Um, no, no you, you did your best. I guess more or less, do you think you would be able to, if, if the easement stays intact and they do need a connection there, like the plan that has been submitted, if it had to be reworked, do you think that could be handled at a, a staff level? I mean, we're talking about, I mean, if that easement stays in place, they got to build access there. So it's not just an insignificant um, point that uh, here. So my question yeah, so is, long, if, if, the, if they had to submit a new plat, do you think that staff could manage that in-house and everything would be fine to do those adjustments? Of course you could handle it, but um, my question is, would you feel comfortable of making sure that that potential connection is intact and has everything that is yeah, ideal. As, as long as it meets, you know, as long as it meets the separation requirements from an adjacent drive and our transportation and traffic engineer uh, is comfortable with any safety aspects, then yes, we can absolutely work that out at staff level. Okay. Well, I, I, I still feel like the whole thing, I, I do feel like planning does have a bigger role than um, what was explained today, but I don't want to put the onus on the petition, petitioner today, so I'm not going to make a motion um, because I, I wouldn't know when that would be resolved. I, that's unfair, but I really would think it would be um, more um, pertinent for staff to look at these easement issues when they come up because if it does change, it could switch up the whole petition. You like, I mean, it, to say that it's not in your ballpark, I think isn't fair to what we're supposed to do as a commission without some of that information available. Okay, if can I make a couple clarifications? One, there's no plat associated with this petition. Mm -hmm. So we're not recording a plat, we're not legitimizing this easement, we don't have anything to do with it. We're doing a site plan on a meets and bounds property that exists that also has easements. Just like many other conditions we do, we say, you know, this one wasn't done in condition form, but if they can't figure out the easement with the other parties, then they're not going to be able to build this, and they're taking that on, that's a risk. Just like other things where we say, hey, you're gonna have to preserve this whole tree conservancy area if they can't figure out how to develop and, and do that, then they just won't be able to do it. So uh, the UDO does have some guidance about if they're, the scope of the changes. So, so for example, if they can't figure out the easement and they have to change the site plan, that's what this is, the development plan, then there, the UDO does allow us uh, to do some of that at staff level and we're happy and able to do that. If it has to become wildly different, then we would not feel comfortable doing that and we would bring it back to you. So it's not going to go up and everyone's gonna say, that's not what we approved. Um, I just wanna clarify that. It's important to note that this this is not a plat. We're not recording a plat. There's no, uh, you know, that brings into the, the discussion of the roadway and everything, That that's not what this is. This is basically a site plan called the development plan because it's in a PUD and uh, that is a risk that the developer is taking by asking for us to approve a site plan where they have an external change that they need to get done before they can start building it. So just to clarify. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, do we have one more comment over here? Go ahead. Um, I, uh, I know we all wanna do our due diligence up here and this kind of threw in a, an 11th hour question, but I am satisfied with the staff's explanation uh, to where I don't feel that we need a sixth uh, uh, reasonable condition here. I, I trust that staff will manage this as it comes to them, and if it does become more complicated and seriously alters what we've discussed here today, that you would bring it back. So I'm fine with the five reasonable conditions as has been moved. All right, I think that's where we're settling now. All right, so we have a motion 
to uh, accept the staff recommendation with the five conditions noted here for PUD 0120. Uh, are we ready for any final comments? Or do we wanna do anything else on this whole proposal? Call the question. Okay, ready? Okay. Burrell? Yes. Kate? Yes. Kenzie? Yes. Schonkweiler? Yes. Samberg? Yes. St. John? Yes. Coyne? Yes. All right, so motion passes, passes and we have approved PUD 0120 with the conditions. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I think we're adjourned.